How's it going guys, Chris here with another Battlefield Top 10, and today we're going to be taking a look at probably one of the most popular weapon categories in the franchise, the good old trusty assault rifle, I'm counting down some of my favourites over the series in a Top 10 styled list. Even though the assault rifles are often seen to be the sort of good all rounder guns, have a nice balance of range, accuracy and ammo reliability, they still vary a hell of a lot in terms of how they perform and function, with many of them being better suited to different ranges and playstyles over others. There's quite a lot to pick from in the Battlefield games, so don't be too disheartened if your number one choice doesn't appear in this video. At the end of the day, it's just another subjective list that's just going over some of my favourites, and the ones that I consider to be some of the best. With that said, like always, do feel free to voice your opinions and discuss down below in the comments which Battlefield Assault Rifles are your favourites, and which ones you preferred having equipped in the many different games over the years. So let's get on with it. Here's my top 10 best assault rifles in the Battlefield games. In 10th place, we're kicking the list off with one of the latest assault rifles we got to use in Battlefield 5, an Italian burst fire rifle called the Breda M1935 PG. There weren't exactly loads of assault rifles to feature in that game, being set around a World War II timeline, but some of the ones that did turned out to be really strong choices, including the Breda. The gun fired four round bursts, and it was totally capable of dropping an enemy close by with just one of those four round bursts, potentially making it a very competitive weapon in the right hands. This allowed it to perform fairly well in short range skirmishes, but because the gun also just so happened to have a higher than average minimum damage value, basically letting it dish out more damage over further distances, this also made the Breda a good choice over mid to long ranges too, with it dealing 22 damage instead of just 15 or 13, often lowering the shots needed to kill, thus making it a really deadly choice over pretty much any range. Combine this with the fact that it also has the fastest bullet speed of all the assault rifles, gives it even more use over those longer distances as well. It's definitely not a perfect weapon, it might not fire particularly fast, hold all that much ammo, and those delays in between bursts can take some getting used to. But with practice and the right specialisations, the Breda M1935 can still be one of the best choices for taking on players over a variety of different ranges, making it quite flexible. Another gun that can do pretty well over a wide set of ranges is the SAR-21 from Battlefield 4. But this one doesn't do it by dealing extra damage, but instead by having barely any recoil whatsoever, making it extremely effective for staying on target whilst holding down that trigger. The SAR-21 is definitely not the kind of gun you want to be bursting into rooms with and aggressively rushing forwards in close quarters, having one of the slowest fire rates in the game. It doesn't deal any extra damage to compensate for this lack of speed, so as firepower is concerned, it can be a little bit underwhelming regarding its time to kill especially within those shorter ranges where you're often going to be outgunned by a lot of other stuff in the game. But if you look at all the stats that are going to affect the SAR-21's accuracy, then this can often be far more useful than having a slightly quicker kill time, actually allowing the gun to take people down quicker over range because more shots are hitting the other guy rather than straying off target. Having a really good recoil pattern is one thing, but the SAR-21's also got some of the lower spread values, higher muzzle velocity, and even a lower first shot recoil multiplier than most of the other rifles too. All stats that are going to further boost precision and make it a far more effective weapon beyond those closer ranges. Coming up next is a weapon from Battlefield Hardline called the ARM, which in real life is technically a light machine gun variant of the Galil Assault Rifle, but in Hardline it's had its bipod and carrying handle removed, being classified as an assault rifle for the operator kit in the game. Now in a way, the ARM is a little bit similar to the last gun we just talked about a moment ago, the SAR-21 from Battlefield 4. It's another slow firing gun with some really good recoil stats, often making it feel like a bit of a laser beam as you squeeze the trigger, and stay locked onto your target nice and easy. Considering a lot of other guns in Hardline seem to have some really nasty recoil patterns that can make them seem a bit tricky to control over mid to long ranges, using the ARM can often be a breath of fresh air. Because although it's not going to be great in a CQC gunfight against a player holding a rapid firing weapon, it's going to feel far more effective over medium distances instead at ranges where those rapid firing weapons would normally struggle. Unlike our last gun, the SAR-21, the ARM's got most of the benefits of an LMG, having some really chunky magazines packed out with 50 rounds. Not to mention that it's also got some of the quickest reload speeds in the class too, so you're barely ever going to be left in an awkward position without bullets. It's definitely not a powerhouse, but it's still arguably one of the best defensive assault rifles in the series. Plus, it could absolutely destroy people on hardcore servers, being so accurate, having so much ammo, whilst dealing that extra damage. Next up in 7th place is the M16A4, 
the Burstfire M16 variant that often got overshadowed by its full auto counterpart in Battlefield 3, despite having the superior stats. It was the fully automatic M16A3 that was always widely popular in Battlefield 3, being one of those guns that everyone seemed to instinctively pick up and use all the time, down to it being a pretty well-rounded gun that was simple to use. But the M16A4 was actually the better version, if you could learn to cope with its burst fire nature, having less horizontal drift, along with lower spread. The A4 variant returned in Battlefield 4, where it was, once again, a really good gun, if you get to grips with that free round burst. It had a faster than average 800 RPM fire rate, just like it did before, plus it also had some of the nippiest reload speeds and a decent mag size. Although recoil wasn't too bad, it could be dampened with attachments to make the M16A4 much more usable over longer ranges, and because it still had that fairly vicious fire rate, it could still match up to quite a lot of the close range carbines and PDWs, making it effective in a variety of different combat scenarios. Not everyone's favourite assault rifle, down to it being limited to free round bursts or semi-auto, but it's still a great one as far as the stats are concerned, that can perform well against people up close and from afar. The next weapon in the list is the Ruby Rose 1918 from Battlefield 1, and I know what you're thinking, this gun is categorised as an SMG in that game, so why the hell has it ended up on here? Well technically the Ruby Rose 1918 has got a lot more in common with assault rifles than submachine guns, firing a stronger intermediate cartridge, hence why quite a lot of people deem it to be one of the first assault rifles to ever be created. Also hence why it was recategorised later down the line in Battlefield 5 as an assault rifle. As it turned out, with it being chambered for that stronger round, this gave it a lot more range than most of the other assault class weapons in Battlefield 1, most of which were mainly limited to close quarter combat only. The Ruby Rose dealt more damage against players further away, could kill in their shots, and had a faster bullet speed, all things to make it a much more competitive weapon over medium distances, where it had a much easier time going against some of the medic class's semi-automatic rifles. Recoil was a bit jumpy, but still quite easy to control, provided you tapped the trigger and used its bipod when you could. Probably not the most aggressive weapon in the series, down to its steady fire rate, but still one of the best weapons in Battlefield 1 nevertheless, and when it came back in Battlefield 5, it also turned out to be a pretty good assault rifle in that game too, down to it having a really smooth recoil pattern with sustained fire, helping it to perform better over distance. Halfway down the list is the AN-94 sometimes considered by Battlefield veterans as a bit of a hidden gem in the series. It has changed a little bit over time, originally being a fast firing, low damage gun in the first Bad Company game, but it's in some of the later games like in Battlefield 3 and 4 where it's adopted some of its own unique characteristics that give it extra appeal. Although it's a select fire weapon that works as a fully automatic rifle, the AN-94 works miles better by switching it over to its two round burst mode negating some of the gun's heavy upwards kick, thus allowing it to be far more effective over longer ranges. Recoil is barely noticeable, and its first shot recoil multiplier is even lowered too, helping even more with accuracy whilst tapping the trigger with that burst fire setting applied. But probably one of the most overlooked and biggest reasons why you should be switching the gun over to that burst mode is down to the fact that it's not only going to make the gun more precise and easy to use, but it's also actually going to increase the fire rate, turning it from one of the slowest shooting guns in the class to one of the quicker ones. It's this combination of speed and accuracy that'll allow you to outgun most of the other weapons in the game at medium distances, making it an extremely effective assault rifle to use over Battlefield 3 and 4's wide open sprawling maps. Next up is Battlefield 4's Ace 23, another Galil weapon in the series, only this time with a lot more bite and ferocity. The Ace 23 is easily one of the most well rounded, aggressive weapons in the game having a fast, but not overly fast rate of fire of 770 RPM, along with a nice combination of good reload speeds and a slightly larger than average magazine size. All factors that are going to help make the gun feel a bit more reliable when using offensive tactics, helping to ensure that you're not going to be left with your pants down in the middle of a fight. The Ace 23 was a lot of people's go-to gun because of these reasons, making it one of the most popular assault rifles in the game. It was relatively effective over most distances, especially within closer ranges, and slightly further. Its recoil perhaps wasn't the best of the bunch, kicking upwards quite a bit with prolonged fire, but providing you tap the trigger and use short control bursts when engaging someone outside of the gun's comfort zone, you could still retain a somewhat decent level of accuracy. It obviously doesn't match up to some of the other bullet hoses in the series, and it could still lightly get outgunned by a few of the other rapid firers in Battlefield 4, but I guess you could say its fire rate was at a bit of a sweet spot, being quick and often ruthless without sacrificing too much precision in the process. 
In our third place spot is a really advanced weapon for its time, often considered to be the first proper widely produced assault rifle to ever be made, the SDG-44, aka the Storm Rifle, one of the most effective versatile weapons to appear in Battlefield 5. As far as being a well-balanced choice goes, the STG-44 pretty much ticks all the right boxes. It doesn't fire particularly fast, and its kill times aren't as fierce as a lot of the other guns in the game, like quite a few of the other assault class rifles or some of the faster firing SMGs, yet it still manages to get the job done well enough most of the time regardless. It only kills a little bit slower than the Sturmgewehr 15, and you don't have to put up with some wacky recoil pattern that'll often throw your aim off target, making the gun less productive over those medium ranges. In fact, the SDG 44s recoil is actually fairly easy to control, because unlike quite a lot of Battlefield 5's other weapons, it's got an equal amount of left and right wood kick, meaning it's not going to fly off in any particular direction when you fire in longer durations, making it much more manageable and predictable. Tapping the trigger lets the gun perform surprisingly well over longer distances, and as an overall package, the SDG 44 just feels like a really reliable option, with one of the larger mag sizes in the class to keep you going through the fight. In second place is the AEK-971, but particularly the rapid-firing version that we've seen in Battlefields 3 and 4, rather than its slower-firing counterpart in Bad Company. The AEK has been a bit of a Battlefield celebrity over the years, featuring in most of the franchise's games with modern-day settings. It's probably not a massive surprise to a lot of you guys seeing this gun pop up on the list. The AEK is definitely up there as one of the best aggressive weapons out of the lot, basically being a more balanced version of the FAMAS still having a pretty wild fire rate and speedy kill times, but generally being a little bit easier to control, whilst being a bit more dependable having those bigger magazines and quicker reloads. Down to the nature of the weapon's recoil stats, it's not exactly a fantastic thing to be using against players far away in the distance, even though it can still technically kill in the same number of shots as most of the other assault rifles here. With that said, long-ranged effectiveness is sacrificed to more short-range lethality, as the AEK can be a truly relentless gun to use for close quarter combat and if you can learn to counter its recoil by shooting in shorter bursts, it can still perform really well and put players down over early medium distances quite quickly too, making it an all-around great offensive option to choose for Russian objectives and advancing on enemy positions. So probably my number one pick for best assault rifle in the Battlefield games has to go to the M416, a weapon that's been consistently effective over the years that never fails to be a practical option to choose no matter what. It's one of the few guns to appear in almost all of the games set in present day, and it's typically always the most well-balanced rifle in said games. The go-to gun if you just want a nice balance of attributes and nothing more. The Jack of all trades. The M416's fire rate might not seem too impressive, shooting at a fairly moderate speed that's sort of in between the slower and faster firing guns, yet it's still got respectable kill times over most ranges, down to it having decent accuracy stats and being quite easy to control as you fire. Holding up to 32 rounds and having some of the quickest mag swaps in the game is another thing to make the rifle even more reliable and ready to take on whatever the game throws at you. The M416 can do well in aggressive situations, defensive situations, against people up close and far away. It's a gun that you can depend on, often being the middle ground weapon for the assault rifle category. And although it doesn't do anything particularly amazing, it's this balance that makes the M416 incredibly versatile and adaptable to pretty much any scenario having strong stats across the board, without having any glaring weaknesses. So that's my list, but do let me know down below in the comments what your favourite assault rifles are in the Battlefield games, and give me a like and subscribe if you want to see more Battlefield content coming up in the future. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.